Asaf's, uh, we're recording, thank you very much. Um, I think that's Rassi in the background, holding the technical things together. Thank you for recording. And um, welcome to Yousaf's Helm Engage 8. Today, we host a conversation with Professor Chilitsi Mavala and Professor Liz Lange on issues of 4IR. While we plan to have Professor Derek Swartz, he was derailed at last minute and with us delighted to have Professor Lange speaking with Prof Mavala today. Today, our format is different. We listen to a pre-recorded conversation rather than presentations. And so this conversation is about their thoughts and I love that each one of them has sprinkled it with anecdotes. And while we talk about 4IR and our digitalized living and learning, we see the challenges of these well illustrated in this conversation. You will see some load shedding and also connectivity challenges, both of which illustrate well what the challenges are when we consider the future as a 4IR integrated digitalized living and learning experience. Perhaps the ongoing electricity failures will finally make the center stage in our debate about advancing higher education because the constant load shedding is a national crisis that is impacting not only our higher education, but the spectrum of our entire lives in devastating ways. A few gems from this conversation um, that we will now hear, a few gems stand out for me. And maybe I can invite you also to listen to what stands out for you in this conversation. So for instance, Prof Mavala says, if you don't read, don't lead. And I know that I'll be using this quote quite a bit in the future. Liz speaks about the concern about the end of the university due to the decline in critical citizenship. And she links this to the algorithms that underpin 4IR. Liz also asks questions about culture as a community-based concept and what happens to it in a world that is increasingly individualized and digitalized. Liz suggests that the campus is a quasi equalizer and then raises questions around the contextualized learner process, the contextualized learning process. And in my mind, what um, the question that came up for me was about uh, the need to have perhaps residential universities, particularly for the most vulnerable of our students. Prof. Mambala shares some personal experiences um, and ends with emphasizing the importance of letting go of our cell phones, at least for some of the time. So please do enjoy. We now have a conversation with Prof. Liz Lange and Prof. Professor Chilitsi Mawala for just around 15 minutes. And then I will invite you to share your thoughts with us in the chat and invite your reflections at the end. So welcome to the Helm Engage our eighth one, which is I think the third or the fourth this year. So we've been doing very well to have these monthly conversations with thought leaders about topical issues, current issues, spicy issues in the sector. Today, I'm very privileged to have Professor Marwala with me and uh, Professor Liz Lange. Uh, we were going to have Derek Swartz, Professor Derek Swartz. He was called away at short notice uh, by the minister and Professor Liz Lange, um, being ever helpful and willing to jump in. Um, thank you very much, Liz, for helping us out. I'm going to quickly read the bios of my two guests, and then we will start immediately with some questions. Um, Professor Liz Lange is very well known in South African higher education, where she has impacted the sector in lasting ways. She was an executive director for the Higher Education Quality Committee at the Council on Higher Education, the CHE, from 2006 to 2010, and was acting CEO of the CHE from 2008, and then became DVC at UFS, and then later UCT for teaching and learning. Professor Lange earned her BA um, honors in history from the University of Buenos Aires in Argentina in 1984, and then an MA in African Studies from the El Colegio de Mexico in 1988, and a PhD in history from WITS in 1988 in and 98. Professor Lange's research interests focus on the philosophy and politics of education. She has done research on change in higher education, as well as on the meanings and possibilities of the notion of transformation, especially at curricular level. Her current work is on higher education curriculum and pedagogy in the context of the core 
the decolonization of the curriculum. So Liz, it's very, we're very, very excited to have you here. Um, and thank you very much for spending the next hour with us and thinking about 4AR in higher education. Our second guest is Professor Chilitsi Mawala, who's the Vice Chancellor of the University of Johannesburg. Prior to that, he was Deputy Vice Chancellor and Dean of Engineering at UJ. He was full professor of electrical engineering, the Carl Emily Fuchs Chair of Systems and Control Engineering, as well as the South African Chair of Systems Engineering, all at the University of the Witwatersrand in Joburg. He holds a BSc in Mechanical Engineering from Case Western Reserve University, Ohio in the US, a Master's of Mechanical Engineering from the University of Pretoria, and PhD in Engineering from the University of Cambridge, and was a postdoctoral associate at the Imperial College London. He, was, he has published over 20 books and over 300 papers in journals, proceedings, and book chapters, and holds three international patents. He was an associate editor of the International Journal of System Science. Prof. Mawala is a registered professional engineer in South Africa, a fellow of the Academy of Sciences for the Developing World, Academy of Science of South Africa, South African Academy of Engineering, and a distinguished member of the Association for Computing Machinery. I'm very excited to have both of you with me in, these, um, in the conversation. And I'm going to quickly minimize my documents. Here we are. So for both of you, um, thank you very much for being here. We're going to talk a lot about 4IR and how to impact higher education. And um, just for um, people in the, in the Zoom room, we discussed some issues we weren't going to talk about. So we're not going to talk about how UJ seems to be speeding ahead in the ranking. And we're not talking about ranking today. But congratulations to you, Prof. Mawala, on that. Um, but I want to start the conversation about this topic by asking you a little bit, each one of you can reflect on the impact um, for IR has been accelerated by COVID-19 and the impact it's had on higher education. Um, and we've seen obvious changes, but I wonder if, I, if you can both reflect and share with us your thoughts on the changes that are obscured, that are not obvious. What are we going to kind of see in a few years has happened and we didn't even realize it. Prof Langer, do you want to go first? Uh, whichever way you, you want to do it. I mean, I'm actually relieved that you gave my, my CV first and then Professor Mawalas because now I'm absolutely sure that I'm sure should be leaving this conversation immediately and <laughs> shut up and don't say anything anymore. Uh, so, so um, you asked what were the immediate effects and, and, and what are the things that we are not seeing? That, that, that COVID-19 uh, brought the kind of acceleration of, of processes that, that, that were underway. Um, and that was specifically in relation to the introduction of much more blended uh, learning and online learning and using digital technologies to support teaching and learning. Um, I've, uh, I think that this has had very important consequences in the redefinition of academic work, uh, in the redefinition of academic identity, uh, and it has had also important consequences in the definition of and the manner in which students relate to the process of learning. Now, it also has brought to the fore uh, in, with, the, with sort of inescapable uh, brutality, if you want, the depths of the inequalities uh, that exist uh, Society, uh, the difficulties in the index teaching and learning uh, along class and and and, and race, um, and uh, and I think that these are these are and, and also some difficulties in the area of attainment uh, of, of 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 learning objectives. So all of these things are what we know and what it is on the surface. For me, what it is not visible. Um, is is the bigger picture, uh, and and I've uh, I mentioned in a prior intervention uh, uh, about these issues. Uh, uh, 
that that we are walking into a situation in which we are not distinguishing between um, long-term historical processes that are taking place and specific moments along a long duration, if you want, uh, like COVID. Uh, and for me, the engagement with with the more structural situation uh, is what we are not what we are not seeing. Um, for me, it is very, very important that we understand uh, in what context we are operating, what does it mean uh, to live in this time, uh, in our, in, in, in this sort of civilization time. Uh, and I think that is a lot about our society and our time that we are not seeing because we are, are fixated in the in the in the more short term questions so that would be my 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 answer to your to your question just to start the conversation yeah i see that Tokmavala, i wonder what your thoughts are no 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 thank you very much and thank you for putting me with uh, with a formidable uh, uh, formidable leader in higher education uh, this longer now uh, um, you know uh, I, I i don't like to use the word the fourth industrial revolution that much uh, uh, contrary to uh, what people think. I actually look at it as just one of the technological tools that we can use in teaching and learning. And I think what uh, uh, COVID-19 has done is to, as Liz has already indicated, is to thrust us into an era where we have to increasingly depend on technology to discharge uh, what we are uh, here to do as higher education, uh, teaching, learning, and uh, reaching our key uh, stakeholders. Now, uh, what were some of the hidden things that we learned? Uh, uh, Lisa has already talked about inequality. Uh, I did not expect that I would have to buy data every month for all our students. It used to cost me um, uh, 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 in excess of 10 million uh, per month, and that was a negotiated rate, including night outs, which means uh, data bundles that only work after midnight, which basically means uh, the learning process was now uh, distributed uh, almost 24 hours because some of uh, uh, the data could only be used uh, um, uh, during the night. So that was a bit of a shock. The second thing that came about was the preparedness of our staff. Uh, to deal with this uh, issue of, uh, of, of, of teaching remotely uh, blended learning. Uh, and we take it for granted that um, uh, digital uh, skills uh, are, are certainly the most, uh, uh, the, 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 the new uh, norm in terms of, uh, of literacy in the 21st century. And sometimes uh, as academic uh, uh, institutions who assume that our staff are equally competent in using digital platforms. Uh, and that came as a, 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 as a shock. Uh, the third thing that came as a shock uh, is, um, is really the issue of spectrum. Uh, normally, uh, 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 telecommunication companies, uh, MTN, Vodacom, and so on and so forth, are the companies that really go and get spectrum and use that spectrum to uh, to do, uh, 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 you know, to offer us our ability to communicate uh, remotely. But it is increasingly becoming clear that institutions such as um, higher education must certainly have their own dedicated spectrum in order to deal with issues of, uh, of inequality and, and the cost of, uh, of technology. Uh, 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 and, and, and that is something that we need to, to do uh, taking uh, forward. Uh, I think the, the, the fifth thing that uh, emerged, uh, which, is, which was a bit of a surprise, was the increase in success rates during the pandemic. Uh, at the University of Johannesburg, um, our success rates uh, were 85%. Uh, it's lower than the University of Cape Town, this. Uh, um, uh, uh, but 85% uh, was our success rate, a module success rate. And uh, during the COVID uh, time, remotely, uh, it jumped to, uh, to 88%. Uh, 
And of course, there were all sorts of issues that we need to grapple with. Is it because of the quality of education that we are offering during COVID? Is it because people are coping? Uh, what is it? You know, uh, uh, but we also realized something that, uh, that now when we're doing the analysis, that the students actually seem to, because even during outside COVID, all our assignments, all our learning materials are on Blackboard, which is an IT system that we use. Uh, we found out that during COVID, uh, the students were definitely spending more time and they were accessing the learning material. And if we were to use that as an indicator of, uh, mm. of, 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 of the learning process, uh, then we can say that uh, the students were learning more. Mm. And of course, during the hard lockdown, it is, it is quite understandable because uh, distractions that, uh, that normally they would have, uh, um, the social life had diminished. So many of them really had uh, uh, no choice but to engage on, on, on this. Right. And then the last thing that we learned was that despite the devices that we gave to uh, 28,000 students, despite the data that we're giving uh, every month, it still did not guarantee that students will be able to have access to, uh, to, to, to learning, simply because depending on where you come from, the level of connectivity differs quite markedly. Mm. Uh, for example, in my village where I come from, uh, we learned very quickly that if you are on MTN, the signal is much, much weaker than if you are on Vodacom. And these things actually uh, repeat themselves across uh, the country. The country and exactly. of course, for, yeah. for, for us, we used to say, we don't tell you which, uh, we will buy you data, but we don't specify um, uh, uh, whether it is MTN, Vodacom, or Telcom, uh, 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 or even shall see at, at some stage, um, uh, uh, you know, and, uh, and, 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 and once, once you, you realize that, that that network that you are subscribing to is not working in your village, uh, we are going to allow you to move to whichever is more convenient. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the things that have emerged. But now out of this, it is clear that blended learning, as Liz has already indicated, it's not only uh, the COVID, uh, the, the thing of the COVID era, we, we're already doing it at the yeah. University of Johannesburg, yeah. but it is I, really the mm -hmm. new form of learning. Yeah, so it's quite interesting. I want just to pick up on that link that Liz earlier on said, that it, um, she's concerned about our short-term focus, our kind of immediate focus to the neglect of the larger picture of that kind of context, and isn't providing perhaps data and facilities to students kind of missing in a sense the mark. So students don't have access to data, don't have access to facilities or to devices, but kind of they learn in a context that is um, that is compromised, that is difficult, that is full of problems. And so perhaps there is a, you know, we miss the larger picture and we focus on just providing data. That was the one question I just wanted you both to comment on. And then also the question around deep learning. So on the one hand, we do see a better, better pass rates but we're not sure about deep learning and deep processing and processing at a more complex level. So these two comments, I wonder if you can comment on that. Um, uh, you want me to go? Let me start with... Yeah, at least go ahead. Do you want to start, Prof? No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm quite uh, happy to, to come after you. I think Liz is frozen. Okay, I mean, maybe I can, I, 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 I can start. Yeah. I, you know, I, I am actually quite, uh, 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 you know, I, I am quite an optimist. Uh, and I've been following because I have a university student. I've been following this online learning and it has, it has quite impressed me. Um, uh, 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 you know, uh, in the sense that uh, the material, the testing, uh, the material, the testing, I found I found all those things uh, to be quite uh, to be quite uh, 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 good enough, you know. Now, I mean, you 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 basically um, uh, uh, brought to the fore one of the most important issue, the context in which these students are learning. One of the things that we really did, I think, we were one of the few universities. We did not necessarily. 
um, uh, uh, chase students out of our campus. And at any given time during COVID, they did not matter how intense COVID was. We, all, all, we always had um, several thousand students who were in one of our premises or another, whether it is uh, outside the campus, uh, um, accredited uh, 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 accommodation, or uh, um, on campus. Mm. So that was very, very important uh, uh, so that we can equalize uh, the uh, uh, the access the context uh, because what we exactly. because what we found yeah. was that uh, you know uh, the university environment is much much more uh, um, valuable than we thought you know mm. uh, and maybe that is why um, out of all this uh, 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 I will call it uh, almost an experience over the last two years it is pretty clear that physical learning is still very very valuable. I could see it. Our students really wanted to come back to campus. They really wanted to come back to campus because um, a completely digital uh, university education really does not do uh, what so it is supposed to. Answers. Thank you, Prof, for that because that was one of my questions I had sent to you. You know, what's going to happen to that education, that um, the face-to-face? -face. But Liz, you wanted to say something to that previous comment about, um, yeah. The bigger picture. No, look, I mean, two, two, two points. Um, first, let me go into the concrete elements of what we are talking about. Um, I, I agree with, with all the issues that we are, that we are uh, uh, mentioning in terms of the cost and availability and et cetera. But the issue of location, I mean, one of the advantages of the campus, uh, of the presence in our campuses and is that is that they become equalizer spaces. All the students have the same resources available to them on our campuses. The moment the campus ceases to exist, what the student has is the reality of the house of the shack in Langa and the house in Constantia. So then the process of learning becomes completely an equal and then there is the student in the rural areas who are on the other side of the towers in the township who cannot have access so so um in that regard when i talk about about the bigger picture i talk about the limits that the structural deficiencies of our our development model and the reality of the socioeconomic development of the country put to all those things. Because I mean, UCT and UJ can invest endless amount, well, not endless, but I mean, we can put as much money as we have available into data, into devices, into, but we cannot change the situation of our students. Uh, and that does not depend on us. So I think that that's the, 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 one, the one problem. Like, 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 like Prof. Mawala is saying, I mean, we also, a, some people did not leave when we sort of cleared the campuses. Uh, and then we brought students based on precisely difficulties. But we also organized, for example, a distance learning a la UNISA all days. So we were, we were actually uh, a couriering materials physically to students. Mm. Mm. With, with the notion that not to leave anybody behind. Mm. I have a different experience, Prof, in terms of results and, and outcomes of learning. Um, of course, in, in the first round of examinations, all our students did better. Uh, and, and so we did quite a bit of study and comparisons and whatever, and we need to see now what happens in, with, with the, uh, this year's examinations and, and etc. Of course, there was a level of cheating, but I also think that in the first in the first moment, in the first quarter, we went soft ourselves. I think that we were all concerned about what was going to happen with the students, etc. So there was a a, a, a kind of a, a level of solidarity and concern about the students that was not very common. And that had an impact on the marks. Come 2021, uh, there were prerequisites of learning that we did not find. So we have to put remedial measures. 
So, uh, and there has been certainly in some disciplines, uh, like chemistry, mathematics, and these kind of things, uh, an increase in, in, in academic dishonesty. Um, so I think that, you know, the one thing does not necessarily bring the others, is this is not a cost consequence uh, uh, situation, but I think that there are elements that still are out there that they need more empirical research for us to be able to say what happened. My sense is that the level of real engagement of the students diminish uh, uh, with the lack of the timetable and the lack of the presence of the teachers. That was our experience. You know? um, but I, I agree that it might vary. Yeah. So I think Liz, maybe I can segue into the next question. So I think the jury's out on whether we've done better We have an interrupted recording and I'm asking our tech team, Patrick, um, to get his recording back up. Let me see where that is at. Patrick must have dropped off. I'm asking Rassi. Rassi, have you got that recording? Are you with us? Just a moment, I'll be playing from where? 426. Just a moment. Uh, 14.26. Um, oh, that's of course, what is the question in the recording? 20, at uh, 20 minutes. Just a moment. So this is what happens with load shedding. I must say we were in a, in a, in a big workshop this morning at the CHE and all speakers and all presenters were compromised to switch from phone to laptops to all kinds of devices and um, even the CHE, the lecture hall. Right. Has, if had, people um, sit in a room, warm body next on. to warm body. Um, what happens to that aspect? Rusty, I'm finding which recording. Is, is, is a far better uh, a, a specialist in the technological side of these things. But I mean, let me let me try and 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 put across one idea and, and Prof can tell me that I'm completely crazy in what I'm saying. Certainly from a pedagogical point of view, when we are talking about digitally mediated or, or digitally enabled teaching and learning, we are not saying that this means distance learning or that all the learning is online. What we are saying is that we use digital technologies to enhance the learning and the teaching with the students on the campus you know having having mental reality uh having classrooms that 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 allow participation and and, and from from other places that the students are not there they mean that you cut the presence i think that there is sufficient um uh, that, that there has been sufficient learning to understand that the space each as a, as a, as a, as a, almost as a geography, as a, as a physical space needs to change. Uh, and that, and that, and that digital mediated education can bring people together in a different way, but it doesn't have to be in a virtual presence. It, and certainly we are choosing it to be at UCT, the physical presence. Mm. So, so the one is not mimical with the other. And, and I think that that's, that that's important. Then there are all the thoughts about the expansion and the sort of a, a monetization, if you want, of the assets of the university in terms of knowledge and how do we make money virtually. But I mean, this is a different story. I don't know, that's, that's my view, Prof. I don't know where you agree. No, no, absolutely. I, I, I do agree that, uh, uh, I mean, it is pretty clear that uh, 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 students like to be on campus and there are some benefits of being on campus. But it does not necessarily mean that all the engagements have to be uh, physical. Uh, for example, right now at the University of Johannesburg, uh, you know, um, the classes are a combination. Some days for a, a class, uh, uh, there will be physical, some days there will be 
uh, digital. So where you and this is what blended learning is all about. You are blending the physical and the digital, uh, uh, depending on what, uh, uh, what, 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 what what is the best outcome. For example, if you are doing collaborative work where people have to work together, it is pretty clear now that if we use digital uh, platforms, then we can be able to include students who are at universities that are, you know, across um, the other continents, you know, which is a much, much more enriched um, learning environment, you know. So, um, and today we have much, much more robust uh, collaboration uh, platform uh, technologies, uh, the metaverse and, and so on and so forth, um, augmented reality and so on, so that we can be able to um, uh, facilitate that. So uh, uh, the issue of um, of a campus as, a, as, as, a, as an equalizer is obviously an important uh, issue, but it it also has to be seen within the context that uh, very few universities can be able to accommodate. Uh, certainly, at the University of Johannesburg, we can't be able to put all our fifty thousand students on campus. We just don't have enough residences. You know. I don't know how it is at the University of Cape Town, you know. Uh, um, uh, so, 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 the equalizing effect is not a perfect. It's not a perfect system. We mm -hmm. try. We have um, we have uh, accredited uh, accommodation that we try to to make them as um, as as equal to uh, to what happens on campus as possible. But students still choose to go and live in unaccredited uh, accommodation so that they can save some money you know uh, so uh, is is one issue that we we always have to really uh, grapple with how do we how do we uh, perfect this idea of um, of a campuses and equalizing yeah it's I, I think it is a question on the one hand if we do say a campus is the equalizer and yet we teach where people are at home um, you know, we need to find our way through that kind of dichotomy or that paradox in a sense. And if I take it further and I say, well, if our students are no longer just sitting next to next uh, next to one another in the sort of learning environment, you say, Liz, that the learning environment is augmented by digital experiences. But I think also, you know, half of our courses, I don't know how many, are taught with people back at home and they're not sitting in the same room. What do you think is lost? I mean, we know what is gained by teaching people where they are at home. We know what is gained. For instance, this environment, this conversation is what we gain by being able to do this online. But what is lost, do you think? Well, you know, for me, what it is lost is, some, is something that is lost for everybody. And, 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 and it is the actual presence. I mean, uh, one of the things that one has to insist is that people's Quite aside from the technological aspect of how much data, more data do you need to, etc., etc., is 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 the, the, is there is all the features of human communication are lost. We are doing the this. moment in which what you have in front of you is a little square with an initial, uh, and when you have the ability to switch off, I mean, all of us have experience. I mean, at least I have. Rob Marwala is a, is, a, is a vice chancellor, so he might have the luxury of doing this. But I mean, of being completely not at the meeting, even if we were there. So you are doing something else. You are watching, you are seeing an email, you suddenly saw ping something or whatever. I have known people who do Sudoku during meetings. You are not there, mm. or you are half there, they put it that way. So presence for me is, is important. And we cannot read the emotion. So we lost in effect. You cannot read the emotion of your students. You do not know when your students are bored. Mm. While you were in a classroom, you knew that your students were bored. You might not care, but you, but you knew that they were bored, that they were doing something else. So you see, these are, I think that those are, 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 are some of the, the issues that, that my but for me, there is another thing that doesn't have to do with COVID and this experience. And it is a much bigger issue. And it is, what is it that happens with uh, the processes of learning 
in a society that has been living with experience of technology words. Mm -hmm. So from the internet, social media, etc., et what are the impact that those things have had in terms of neurological development, mm -hmm. in terms of our brains? And I don't think that we have caught up with neuroscience developments in terms of developing appropriate teaching a, 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 and a particular theories of learning. Mm. So this is a very new, gen it's a different thing. So we need to adjust physical or non-physical. We need to adjust to the manner in which we teach and our understanding of how learning takes place. And, and then there are a whole lot of issues Piece of on depression and 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 and, and burned out and etc. To do with the manner in which we have a sense of self or not in mm -hmm. context. Sorry, no, no, time, to, time to stop talking without, without. No, no, no. It's good. I, I think we got the drift of what you're saying is that a lot of things are happening on a neurological level, on an emotional level, on a on a well-being level that we're not able to gauge. We're not able to monitor that. Um, is it quite so, Professor Mawala? No, no, absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the technology is obviously evolving. Uh, now you have technologies that look at um, just uh, the, all, all our devices now have cameras. Just the blinking of the eye uh, while you are reading something, it is able to uh, to highlight things that it thinks you have not really paid attention to, and so on and so forth. So technology um, as an aid to learn. Uh, is actually going to accelerate, uh, 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 and we need to just uh, uh, um, take note of that. Now, just on what is um, uh, what is uh, uh, missing, one of the things that I do as vice chancellor is actually I read a book every month, and I invite staff and students to discuss a book. Uh, in, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and 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 before COVID, we used to actually do it physically. Um, and, and, and lots of people used to come, we'll have wine, and, 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 and it would be a two hour event every month. And now what we have seen is that because now we do it remotely, um, we get more people uh, participating. Uh, because that person who would not otherwise have come because uh, uh, they have to drive from Senten for, 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 for 35 minutes, um, it is now convenient for them to uh, to watch. Uh, and secondly, um, uh, everything that we do is now it could it could possibly also be on 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 um, uh, on YouTube uh, uh, even if it is physical. But it is much much easier. Uh, you know, I find that uh, um, it is quicker, and 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 we still get uh, people who are watching these things uh, uh, on the digital platforms. So, uh, 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 I mean, just to summarize, human beings are, uh, I don't know who said this, but uh, must be some famous um, um, uh, uh, philosopher. You, as human beings, we are actually social beings. You know, uh, so contact, uh, inter physical interactions is very much wired into our DNA because that's what we have been doing uh, for the for the past, uh, I don't know, uh, hundreds of thousands uh, of years, even before we became uh, Homo sapiens, you know, and 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 whatever we do, and, and some of this human touch, we can try to simulate it, you know, affective computing, which is really um, a computing that takes into account or, or of the emotions, is going to come, but it's not quite like the real deal, you know, which is really. Um, interacting with uh, with human beings, you know. So, so the future will be blended, and we should accept it. And uh, there will be weaknesses in in the technologies that we are going to uh, to, to adopt. So, one area that um, perhaps worries me is about um, thinking about transformation and diversity and othering and being different and being in a group of diversity. This one thing when you are in a Zoom room with people who are diverse and different. And yet when you're in a class, in a, in, on campus, in a class, in a tutorial, with people who think differently, who have different beliefs, who behave differently, who look different, who are different, um, to, you know, 
I think something, I think it is a different the process. And, and, and if we don't have warm bodies that are different, different warm bodies in a room, um, we're missing out on that. And we transfer that kind of competency to an online competency. And it's not quite the same. So transformation in its full, in its full definition isn't accelerated if we do it online. What would be your thoughts on that? I, I actually think uh, both of them have their own disadvantages. I am very much finding that uh, whatever happens in the physical spaces is also happening in the, in the um, social spaces. Uh, you know, before I went to, uh, before I went to, uh, to, to an undergrad um, in the United States, I was actually a student lease at the University of Cape Town. Uh, I, I was mm. living in Smart Hall. And uh, I remember very well that uh, every time I went to the dining hall at Fuller Hall, there used to be this guy, I'll call him a chief of, of, of my village, <laughs> who used to call all the people from my village to come and sit together, you know. I'm like, I came all the way to Cape Town to study. <laughs> and uh, it's as if I have not left home, you know. So most of those things uh, uh, of, uh, of, 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 of people isolating themselves, you are going to find them on the digital platforms. Um, you're also going to find them on the physical platforms. And what we ought to, uh, to understand is that it's more than just the physical spaces or the, or the cyber spaces. Uh, um, there is more that needs to be done outside uh, that, you know, uh, to make sure that people take full um, opportunities of, uh, of, of the diverse spaces that we operate in. Mm. Liz, I can see you thinking. Yes, because I am not sure. I, I've, um, you see, one of me about this whole thing, and that's the reason why for me the issue about about technology and where we are at as 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 global society is 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 the part of the picture that I think that we are not exploring sufficiently. Uh, has to do with the growth of individualism and 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 I'm technology in the manner in which we are using it maybe there are different ways of using it uh increases that individualism and individuality and culture culture tends to be a collective tends to be a sociological and anthropological thing so I am not sure the impact, uh, I mean, how much transformation uh, of an institutional culture can take place uh, by this way of meeting. Uh, I think that there is a lot uh, to do with whether you admit or you do not admit, whether you greet this way or you greet that way, whether you communicate in, you know, there are all these sort of things. Um, and. And, and I think those are hugely, hugely important. Um, and I don't see uh, technology helping us with that. I think that that has to do with the reality, with the lived reality of the culture that you deal with, um, for the good and for the bad. So that's that's the one thing that that, that for me is is, is 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 very important. I mean, I think that in, there is a lot of individualism in 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 this you know, in this, in this stage of our social formation. Um, and I think that technology insists on that and blurts um, feeling in, in, in the sense that because, because you cannot see all, you know, now it's three of us, but if we were 15 people here, uh, the manner in which I receive your words are not as clear on the screen as there are face to face. So it allows for a level of cruelty um, and disregard for the other that, that it is prevalent in our society globally. And, and, and that worries me. So there's, there's two things that you said. The one is exactly the cruelty that is enabled because we're somewhat disembodied. We're not quite all of us here. You know, there's not sort of a, a cohesion of the humanity. But the other one is the cultural, um, the culture develops in the collective and if the collective is made up of such individual parts who remain individuals because of the digital nature of it 
then that's a, um, that's a, a, a you know, it, it becomes a, a difficulty. Um, mm. You know, sorry, Prof. Bavala, you want to say something to that? No, no, absolutely. I mean, the issue of culture is very important. What, what, what we, we, we sometimes underplay is the impact of technology on, on culture. I mean, you know, um, if uh, my grandmother, my old grandmother uh, was to wake up today, he will think I come from another space, mm. you know, uh, uh, because the mm. culture has changed uh, what we do, uh, even how we speak, uh, things that we're expected to do. And, and technology has been a major driver of that. You know, and I think it, I, I think we can see that a new sort of culture is actually emerging. I always say that um, uh, we studied psychology of people in the in the eighties and, and and before. Um, now you really have to study the psychology of people uh, as they interact with their machines. You know, when we wake up, we we reach for our smartphones and so on and so forth. On the issue of spaces, because I really just want to highlight this issue of spaces. And Liz talked about people not being there uh, when they are digital. Uh, people are not there when they are physical, you know, uh, 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 and you can see it, you know, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, that uh, our attention span is, uh, is, is, is greatly reduced, you know, uh, because of, of Twitter, uh, we, we, we know many people don't even go and read newspapers. It's just too, it's just too long. You know, you can get a tweet and get the gist of, uh, uh, of the story. Uh, and, 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 and this, this issue of people being conscious, uh, in the, in, in the environment, uh, is, is actually a, 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 um, a terrible, it's actually a very, very important thing. One of the books that I read, um uh, 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 you know for my book uh, for for my book reading uh, it's a book written by Hannah Arendt um the uh, Eichmann in Jerusalem and the banality of evil and my understanding of the banality oh. of evil is really um you know uh, uh, what what our you know uh, uh, our occupancy of the space how much we can do a lot of things without without really paying too much attention to you know and and that even becomes convenient because uh, because you are not paying too much attention to the spaces you can do much much more damage you know because your conscious your conscience is 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 not is not is, is there and not and not there at the same time uh, it, we know very well that it is easier uh, to to do things over email because we are not really there, you know. Uh, we are not really there facing somebody in the face, you know. And if we are sometimes there, uh, maybe we would not act the same way, you know. Uh, and and this feeds into uh, the new culture that has emerged, that is emerging, that we need to understand if we are going to create a, a world that is that is good and just. Mm. That then brings me to the question. Liz, did you want to reply? I, 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 the prof touched on something that had been my, 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 my sort of not quite secret passion. I mean, I'm, I, I, enthusiast reader of Hannah Arendt. I think that the argument that Arendt makes in, in Eichmann in, 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 in Jerusalem, is the notion that people become unthinking cogs in a machine and and when people stop thinking then they cannot make moral decisions uh, and as a matter of decisions like uh, and, and it's, a, it's an interesting warning because you see, we don't need to be in a concentration camp, sort of cogs in, a, in, a, in, a, in an unthinking machine. Uh, and, and, and I think it is an interesting issue to flag, to warn all of us mm. that technology and that the things that we are doing can be, because when the algorithm mm. starts thinking for you and you become mm. being nudged mm. by, 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 
by the algorithm or whatever, then you stop mm -hmm. thinking. And, mm -hmm. and there are Absolutely. certain aspects of what we are building, which I think are almost inimical to what we said we want to do as universities. Mm -hmm. So our critical thinking has to be defended against the possibilities of homogenization and 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 unthinking in a, in, in in a sense. Um, uh, and which so anyway, I'm very well, we, I'm very, we, 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 we very glad that you're reading Ashman at the university. Yeah, uh, well, you know, we, which brings a very important topic uh, uh, that uh, is: Are we adapting our curriculum to be able to understand? Because now that 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 that, that machine. Uh, that uh, Eichmann was operating in an evil machine is a much more complicated. Uh, it's much more addictive today. I mean, the internet okay. and so on and so forth. You know, and uh, and 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 for us to be able to, we really have to really look at um, uh, what psychology is, what uh, economics is. You know, what uh, what um, uh, what sociology is. You know. Uh, and, and, and I'm afraid that uh, uh, we are not doing enough of that yet, you know, uh, it's okay. certainly because of the weaknesses in, in, in the educational system from the industrial, from the uh, third industrial revolution, where we really wanted uh, specialists who understood how to operate a machine and, and not understand anything else, you know, uh, and, and it will be a journey that we need to travel. If, can I ask you about another question then, what kind of leadership do we need to navigate this tension of saying, well, if our thinking is guided and not belong by convenient algorithms, rather than us being conscious and thinking and present, um, what kind of leadership do we need in the higher education sector to navigate this? Well, I mean, I, 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 I can start. Uh, I, 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 I did write a book, uh, 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 you know, leadership, is it leadership lessons? Uh, yeah. Uh, and I think um, thinking skills is very, very important. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and people, sometimes when we recruit and when we get people, uh, we have not often looked at, um, mm. uh, you know the the capacity to think thinking as a culture uh, is 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 absolutely very very important the second uh, uh, aspect of leadership that uh, i really feel very strongly about is that leaders must read you know those who do not read must not lead i mean that's very very important you know and if you look and i have spent quite a great deal of time studying uh, and uh, and um, you know I, I i normally watch what uh, what, what Bill Gates um, says about the 10 books that he read um, mm -hmm. uh, on that year and various people, you know. Uh, uh, and, 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 and reading, unfortunately, in South Africa is, is, is not a culture, you know. And part of the reason why we introduced the Vice Chancellor's Reading Club was because I would go to, 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 me, to a department and I would ask, what book have you read in the last uh, uh, six months? I mean, these are some of the most educated people in our society, and they would not have read any book. You know, uh, uh, I think reading skills, uh, uh, reading is 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 is, is very very uh, much important. I also think uh, the leader of today must understand technology. You know, when I was at Case Western, one of the things, and I just came back from there now, one of the things that I really appreciated is when, and I transferred from University of Cape Town and that mechanical engineering curriculum, I know it, it really was teaching me about engineering. But when I arrived there, they told me that I have to take 12 semesters of human and social sciences. And that was like, you know, almost 30 years ago. I mean, I took three acting classes, psychology classes. Uh, in AI, we talk about reinforcement learning and I tell people in AI that no, I actually learned reinforcement learning in a psychology class, um, Pavlov and his dogs, you know. So, uh, uh, you know, that, uh, that uh, uh, the education of, you know, uh, in its completeness, those in the human and social sciences must understand technology, those who are in the technology must understand uh, humanities, that, that holistic education really is an important leadership skills. 
Yes, do you want to say something about leadership if we're worrying about the end of the critical citizen? Uh, no, I mean, I agree with, with, with what Prof. had just said. I, I would add a, a, a few things. Um, Comment what 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 Prof said. Uh, I think that high education leaders have to be questioning leaders. I mean, I think that one of the things mm. that horrifies me is when we all walk like sheep uh, behind the new fad, and and the new fad can be anything, uh, and 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 it just works. We if what we are trying to do is to lead critical institutions to be the the, the 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 sort of shining light of that of that critical ability so for me that's uh i think that the that the level of 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 courage is important because because particularly when you are part of a public higher education system the temptation never to defy the masters Mm -hmm. and and i think that that's a problem uh, mm -hmm. and i think that we have experienced this thing in this country in the last 25 years quite strongly mm -hmm. uh and and uh, and i i i agree with with, with prof about about the i mean in a sense in a sense the the, the an, a high education leader for me has to be an intellectual in the sense of mm -hmm. Edward Said intellect, an amateur intellectual, you know, somebody who loved uh, 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 knowledge and questioning and reading and, and from all areas. So, and, and I think that that's really important, but, mm. and then let me tell you one more thing that for me is important. I think that one has to understand that fear and doubt are important and that is sometimes absolutely necessary in order to think and to do things. So we, we, we missed we your word much. after fear and doubt. doubt. What was your third point? Silence. Silence. Ooh. Ability, ability to, to, to look for silence and, and mm. contemplation. Mm. Maybe yes. just to add, because I mean, the, the, the issue that, uh, that Lisa has raised, the issue of critical thinking is very, very important. And what, what, what we have observed is that technology is actually making people less critical. Because when you go to Facebook, it, it literally you know, uh, 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 studies your tastes, what you like, the news that you like, and feeds you what you like. You know? oh, How are you right. gonna think critically if now you are only reading things that you like? you know uh, because it really does not you know diversify you know and give you things that you have never read before you know? mm -hmm. and 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 the danger of that is that you're going to have um, self-absorbing people uh, who are not going to understand uh, 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 the good of a good argument you know uh, right. uh, 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 and 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 the value of that you know that a society that uh that does not question things uh, shall ultimately die you know uh, it might not be physical death but uh to be intellectual death it will be um death of uh, of, of of looking at things uh, critically mm. yeah. so i heard you speak about the, your concern about the end of the critical citizen and um that culture is collective and that digital isn't equal to distance and you quite right to emphasize that um can you give me one word before we wrap up? I know Liz, your load shedding is coming on in about three minutes. The future of the university, what must we watch out for? What is one thing if you think about in 10, 20, 30 years, we look back and say, we, this is the one thing we um, should have considered, or we must consider, or we did consider and we're lucky. I would say never stop being critical of itself in the first place. I mean, self-reflecting universities are absolutely necessary uh, in order in order to understand how they position them in the world that it is changing and how to influence the change in the world. That would be my thing. 
No, I, you know, I, 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 I don't quite like to quote Mao, but, but I'm going to quote the... Please I think do. The concept I'm a Communist <laughs> Party member. Uh, I think the concept of criticism and, and, and self-criticism is very, very important. Institutions must always, uh, in, in an era where things are changing so, so quickly, if you don't, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, if you don't adopt this principle of criticism and, and self-criticism, you are going to die. And secondly, I think we will have to watch this um, this new species that is emerging, the human machine species, mm -hmm. where a, a human being that can that goes uh, completely mad when they are denied their smartphone just for thirty minutes. You know, we need to watch it very very carefully. You know. I think people fear letting go of their smartphone for the reasons that you mentioned. You know, it nudges our thinking. It gives us security. Absolutely. If Absolutely. I'm at my smartphone, I don't know what to think. I'm lost for which direction I turn. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm at the mercy of my own thoughts. And a lot of people fear those. So I want to yeah. thank you both very, very much um, for having conversation with me and with us, uh, with each other on this issue. Um, a lot of wisdom was kind of like I took notes on this. And thank you very much for that we will pick up on these themes again with the next engage for now i'm going to thank you um professor mawala thank you very much for your time and Liz lange professor lange thank you very much for your time thank, you, no, very thank much. you very much for inviting me i absolutely enjoyed it so thank you that was great um i thoroughly enjoyed that conversation and i saw a lot of you um had comments coming through um there was a lot i felt there was a lot here and um it's wonderful that by the way everybody will get a recording you get a link to the recording you get a link to the recording in youtube it takes a while to download in youtube but by tomorrow morning you should have a link on your desk so you can listen to it again and i wanted to summarize some of the comments that came through in the chat and if anybody wants to uh, raise them please raise your hand let me know that your hand is up or you can speak we'll have about 10 minutes till quarter past we'll have about 10 minutes 12 minutes to have a brief conversation we don't have professor mawala and professor liz lange with us and that's why of course there was a recording um the one thing i did want to say about the recording what's really interesting what came through in this morning's conversation at the che um, was an interesting statistic. For instance, at the Free State, we have 7% of students listing English as their first language. So 93% of students are not studying in their first language, but studying in their second, third, fourth language. And by recording the lessons, of course, they can go slowly over it, listen to it again, pause, look up words, and so forth. So being able to record a conversation has been hugely advantageous for people who don't study in the language in which they are taught. So that is, um, we, 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 you know, the recording there um, is bringing us a lot of advantages. Um, any comments? I wonder if um, somebody can share with me if they want to um, share their comments. We've had some comments on academic dishonesty. There have been a lot of national conversations on academic marks that probably the data in the first year of COVID and perhaps the second year is not reliable data. We don't quite know how generous lecturers were, and we don't quite know how perhaps um, collaborative students were when they wrote their exams. Um, so we can't be sure of exactly what this data, or what the, the data on the exams, what that really means and how much um, indeed we did better or not. Um, anybody's welcome to raise your hand, share with me your comments. The, the, there was another set of comments coming through on mental health and well-being and transformation and if we think about quality education quality education for us in south africa means that there is a, a bouquet of offering we don't just offer digitalized lessons but we also offer an experience we offer support we offer housing we offer food we offer leadership opportunities and so forth so for us the idea of quality education is a much bigger um, it's, it's a much bigger bouquet of offering, suite of offering than just digitalized um, skills based learning. And so I'm um, quite right in when we um, reduce our learning to digitalized spaces, 
we somewhat miss out on that quality on the broader experience of learning. Alu, I see your hand being up. Hi, Birgit, and hello, everyone. So great to be here this afternoon. Thanks for, for staying with us and, and, and sharing in that really fascinating um, um, and, and conversation between Prof Marwala and Prof Langer. Um, I think just coming out of the, the kind of symposium we had earlier this morning with the CHE and, and with the fantastic research, which we will share, I, I think it's, it's incumbent on us that we create those platforms for engagement and for sharing of, of, of these kind of surveys, um, the work that's being done, in, especially, especially in, in our experiences of COVID. Um, but I think uh, my overall impression is, and I think that's, we are our own worst enemies in the academy, you know, especially in South African higher education, we lurch from one crisis to the next. And it's a lot of reaction uh, and not enough reflection. And then coupled with the reflection is learning. So, I mean, there's a rich evidence base in the last two years we've gathered from the experiences of, of students, of staff, of leadership, um, uh, you know, on women, academics in, in COVID. And I think we need to really build on that and share that and create more and more platforms, not just to talk about these things, but to think of ways and how we can action and support those who are, are literally like some of you um, at the chalk face. Thanks, Birgit. Thank you very much. Um, Oliver, I think we've covered all the comments and I just wanna see if there's not another hand going up. Um, I want to thank everyone. Um, it, was, um, it was again a wonderful experience being here and experiencing the load shedding that happened to me during the interview, Liz's connectivity and seeing how Chilitsi's um, um, you know, broad bandwidth in the middle of Johannesburg clearly beefed up by his own um, data. Um, it's just hugely advantageous to how he speaks and I present. And I mean, I think that, that in and of itself is so valuable. And it's very hard for to do this for South Africa in an era of load shedding. And we do need to begin to think about load shedding as a, as a national crisis. Um, and perhaps that's a theme for our next engage, Oliver. I wonder if as a team, we can think about it. I thank you all for being here. Any comments and thoughts, please email me or one of the team members. I wanna thank our tech team in the background who rescued us when something happened in the background. Thank you very much. Oliver, thanks to you, Michelle. Rassi and Tisetso and Patrick and I wish you all a wonderful afternoon and the recording is going to be on your desk tomorrow the evaluation link is in the chat please fill it out thank you all and goodbye <laughs>